Okay, welcome to this video. It's gonna be a fun one. Um, if you don't know what 12 Tet is, then go watch my video about that, and then this will all make sense. But today, we're gonna put other numbers in place of that 12, and uh, it's gonna be fun. Let's do it. The synth that I'm gonna be using today is called Anna Mark, and it sounds a bit like this. <laughs> Okay, cool, but that was 12 tet, so let's go to 19. So that was Jingle Bells, kind of. <laughs> I played as if I was on a 12 tet keyboard, but of course I was on a 19 tet keyboard, so you kind of heard how that sounded. Um, so next I think I want to show you just like how it looks if I want to actually play something that sounds like a fifth or a major chord in uh, in 1910. So now that you have an idea of what it looks like, which is basically just everything spread out, makes sense, you know, 19 steps per octave instead of 12, I'm gonna have to pray, play more spread out. Um, let's do the flip side of the Jingle Bells thing, where I'm going to play as if I'm in 19 tet, but I'm actually in 12 tet. So what if we layer them? So it was pretty interesting. Um, I, I don't know, it, it, it doesn't sound that bad. Like, you would expect stuff to sound really bad when, when you start changing all the tuning systems, but it doesn't really sound that bad to me, and it sounds interesting, and that's kind of what I want, so I, th I think it's pretty cool. But enough of 19 Tet, I think we should move on to something more interesting. Let's go to 5 Tet, because there's... I already, okay, spoiler alert, I already kind of experimented with 5 Tet, and it's freaking awesome, let's do it. Five tet. I love five tet so much. Okay, like, did you hear those sounds? It's so cool. It's so cool. I love five tet so much. It's like those glissandos. They remind me of. Uh, it's a sun gazer tune. I'm, I, I'll put the name up here. I think it's like Dream of Mahjong. It, that might be the wrong one. But there's a sun gazer tune that has like some effect in it. It sounds a lot like the five tet glissando going down. But like, but like um, when I did the glissando on the black keys going up a little bit like that. Like, doesn't that sound exactly like some sort of really cool like video game? like sound effect when you get some achievement or something like and then there's so much cool stuff there's so much cool stuff and when you play like the groups of the notes that kind of reminds me of like some sort of like news theme or whatever you know the news themes that always have like they always do like a sus2 chord or whatever um, they do like a, a sus2 or a sus4 chord and then they kind of go up the octaves or whatever and um, it sounds really similar to that and I'm not exactly sure why so let's investigate this is a time lapse, five time for my raps. Didn't know what else to dub over. Trap beat, it's a five toner. Look at me doing the math. Brain is awake for a tad. So I've done the math, and uh, it turns out, yes, the frequency ratios between the notes in the five tet clusters are very, very close to the ratios in in sus chords. So um, the major cluster, where you have two whole steps, the ratios there are very close to the ratios of a sus2 chord in first inversion. The minor cluster, where it's a whole step and then a half step in 5-tet, uh, that hits the same frequencies, very close to the same frequencies as a sus4 chord in root position. So yeah, they actually do hit very similar frequencies. So that's really cool. 5-tet just happens to have like sus chords built into it when you play clusters. I love 5-tet so much. Okay, so we've done 19-tet, we've done 5-tet, Let's go on to a gigantic tet, okay? We're gonna save like the fractional ones for last, but let's go on to a gigantic. So let's go to 500 tet. So 
So while I'm not as big of a fan of 500 Tet as I am of 5 Tet, there's some really cool stuff to be to be found here. So obviously, um, the span of the entire keyboard is like a step. Um, I think so, right? So if we go... Yeah, that's like, that's like a whole step, right? Um, that's from the bottom to the top of the keyboard because there are only 88 keys and we're supposed to have 500 keys to get an octave. Um, and so that, that's kind of interesting. And so you hear how the glissandos are really just like the same note being repeated over and over again, more or less, um, with a little bit of a pitch bend happening. Um, and, and what I did at the end there was I was experimenting with unison. Uh, essentially, that's basically what it is. So unison is a really, really, really common thing in synthesizers where the, uh, the signal is duplicated and then the pitch is changed. Um, and then the panning is sometimes changed. There's some things that you, that you change about the duplicates. Um, and so this is a very interesting way to approach unison. For instance, you could put like three notes really close together towards the top and then have, the, uh, and then have a few more that are farther apart below and you get this like really particular unison sound. And so then you sample that and, and reuse it. Yeah, this is really cool. I'm, prob I'm probably gonna do this. I'm probably gonna use this. Let's do it. Alright, so we've done so much, and it's so cool, like, I'm loving this, I'm loving this stuff, and, um, yeah, you know, okay, granted, that synth didn't really sound any different than a normal unison synth, but it was still cool to just know that underneath that, there was some 500 tent magic that was going on, you know? Uh, but yeah. We haven't even gotten into the good part yet, right? 12.5 tet, um, and then we, we'll look at like 12.1 tet, maybe 11.9 tet, uh, but let's look at 12.5. Let's do it. So as you can hear, very, very weird sounds that we get when we really try to uh, hear those intervals, uh, but you heard like the line playing, like when it was like notes that were being played close together um, and there wasn't any harmony going on, like it didn't sound that, like it sounded pretty normal. You know, um, and and that's just because it's pretty close. It's pretty close. It's 12.5 tet. It's not that far away. And with 12.1 tet, that effect will be pronounced even more. It's super weird to like play that chromatic scale, and it pretty much sounds right. And then you get to the, you get to the note, and really like it sounds at that point like you've gotten to the octave because you're so used to it. But then you go back and play it, and it's like it's a quarter tone off. And I think that a lot of those chords that like almost sound right, like the minor chords and then like the, you know, the small, the small voicing, um, like major chords and minor chords, if I wanted to make my song sound kind of like horror or, you know, like spooky, scary kind of, like I could see using it in like Halloween music or if I wanted to be really, like if I was making something really edgy, you know, <laughs> or whatever. You know, if I'm getting like angsty and mad about something, then then maybe I would use these these tunings to make the chords have a little bit more like grit. It's interesting because like when you add that 12.5, 
chords, like whether you play them as block voicings or as open voicings, actually affects the tuning of the chord, the perceived tuning of the chord, as well as whether it's open or closed. So that's a really neat effect that you don't get from 12 tet. Like, 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 Let's look at 12.1 tet now, because it's gonna be very, uh, similar, but, you know, we'll kind of see some of the effects amplified, um, and some of the effects diminished as well. Let's do it. So 12.1 tet, like you heard, it pretty much sounds just the same, and you should expect that, because it, it's pretty close. But when I played the octaves really far apart, you heard how incredibly dissonant that was. It's really dissonant because it's like, you know, I'm not sure exactly how much it is when it when it's spanning, you know, five octaves, I think. Five or six octaves was what I played there at max. Uh, but it's probably something like a quarter tone, and a quarter tone is like one of the most dissonant things ever because it's not close enough that you just approximate it as, as octave equivalent. Um, but it's even more dissonant than a half step, so quarter tones are really, really in there. That's what that sounds like, and again, I think that has more of an application in if I want to make my stuff sound just a little bit more edgy because it's just a little bit out of tune, especially if I the farther, because the farther away I stray from middle C, the farther it gets off of of normal eco temperament. So. Maybe, maybe that's what I would do. So if I, I wanted to, you know, go up a couple octaves um, with the 12.1 tet, and then maybe like record it there, and then pitch it back down a couple of actual octaves by, you know, like halving the frequency mathematically, so that it's then a little out of tune where it was supposed to be. You know, like stuff like that. Maybe I'll implement that, but uh, we'll we'll see in the future whether whether I use this stuff. Probably will. It's kind of cool. Yeah, it's it's blowing my mind a little bit, and um, I really enjoy it. That's about it. I make a lot of music here. I make a lot of videos about music, like this one, um, exploring things. I I'm not formally educated in music theory at all. I've never gone to school for music. Um, I mean, I've take I've taken like orchestra class and. Um, I've taken piano lessons, but we don't do music theory in those. We just like we do enough music theory so that you know how to play the music, but nothing like this. So um, a lot of what I say is probably already out there, and a lot of what I discover is probably well documented. But it's it's the journey, man. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more stuff like this and uh, more music from me if you like my music. So. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.